simple being, non-resistance, non-fear, uh, just being yourself, show up every day into your life and just be yourself. Um, the philosophy is like this. They call it Samyama. Samyama means that the God force and nature replenish themselves. So everything about nature is um, self-replenishing. And because you come from nature, you also have the ability to replenish yourself with abundance. If you think about your own mind even, you know, the human mind eventually comes back to the God force. So if the God force can replenish herself, your mind being made of the God force is God's mind. And therefore, you as God's creation can always go inside yourself and create from inside out. I think the only problem is when people get into the wrong identity, when you start calling yourself uh, Peter or Diana, and you really believe that, you fall away from the idea that the God force is acting within you. In other words, your heartbeat is automatic, happening spontaneously. Your breathing when you're sleeping is happening by itself. Uh, a doctor may say it's your pituitary gland that's causing your primary functions to function, but what's giving the pituitary gland its intelligence? The intelligence comes back to the one force. That one force is inside you, it's self-sustaining, and it's full of abundance. So thinking too hard about competition doesn't make much sense because your competition has a kind of uniqueness that's been lent to it by the God force as you have been endowed with the same uniqueness. So if you have a, a hairdressing salon and across the street there's a competitor, it doesn't make sense to be riled up about the competition because that person has their own uniqueness and you have your own uniqueness and there's really no shortage because both of you are being energized by the same God force. So you're going to have uniqueness. There's also the argument of flaw, you know. Um, the ego is always tried to better itself through plastic surgery, better looking car, better looking clothing. The ego is always trying to get rid of some of its flaws. But the idea of a flaw is nonsense because if you come from nature, then there's no snowflake that is flawed. There's no raindrop that's flawed. There's no seagull that's flawed. So the idea of flaw comes from the mind, comes from the ego. So imagine if the whole idea that you need to better something about you goes away, then you just simply show up every day, take in the God force with your breath, go, go to your job, go to your environment and act. I recommend three daily practices in terms of simple ease and grace. Number one, maintain a dialogue with your soul as if she's hovering around you all the time. So when you're walking around all day at your job, you're going to have all sorts of stresses. Keep a live dialogue going with the higher self, with the soul during your working day. First of all, it does a lot in terms of reducing your sense of loneliness. Loneliness comes from the word Mary. You see, when you think you're Mary and there's no God force inside you, then you feel very lonely. So the first exercise I recommend, talk to somebody. That somebody being a higher power within yourself. When you were in your mother's womb, there was a force working on you. Talk to that force as if the force is around you all the time. And it is, because something's making your heart beat and something's making you breathe at 3 a.m. when you're snoring away. So you're not voluntarily breathing, it's happening. It can't be a gland because the gland doesn't have its own innate intelligence. What I'm saying is there's an indweller in your body allowing all your functions to happen. 
So all you need to do is believe that that indweller is the one force that keeps the universe going. So exercise number one, talk to that indweller all day. You can give her or him a name, your higher self, and have a dialogue. Let's say you're going to a sales meeting, talk to the indweller and say, I would like you to be in the meeting with me, like that. If you go to a party, visualize that the divine indweller is inside you as you're socializing with people. Number two exercise, your daily actions need to demonstrate certainty that you are in touch with that force. So let's say you have 15% of the required capital to rent a Pilates studio. You only have 15% of the money. Uh, your daily action has a huge effect on that God force. In other words, when you go to the realtor to ask for a contract to rent out your Pilates studio, you should be assuming that the other 85% other of the capital is coming. These types of talks don't really surprise you. If you look at the lives of successful people, they kind of step out there with some sort of an inner certainty that the resources are coming. So number two exercise, uh, what do your daily actions exhibit? Are they exhibiting doubt or are they exhibiting absolute unity with the force that created you? So first exercise, have a daily constant dialogue with an imaginary best friend who is made of that force. Your higher self if you want to. You can give it different names. Number two, your daily actions, even if they seem very foolish to you, you're going out to rent the space for the Pilates studio. You go inside the realtor's office and you speak as if God's mind is in your mind and your bank account is God's bank account because you cannot be separated. When you were in the womb being created, you were not separated from that force. You can't possibly be separate. The only time you feel separate is when you identify with your first and last name and then you feel separate and then you lose, lose the power. The third exercise Every time you breathe, you employ the following mantra or sentence. This is the sentence I wanted to tell you last night. I wanted to tell you about this sentence. This one sentence is the highest and most supreme practice in the world of yoga. So let's say your name is Lucy. The sentence is like this. The sentence is, I, the God Force, I'm breathing into Lucy and breathing out to act in Lucy's life. I'm going to repeat this again. See, there's two characters in this sentence. There's Lucy and I, the God Force. So the way you construct your uh, mantra, I, meaning the God Force, I am breathing in the body of Lucy and exhaling to act through Lucy's life. If you don't have both names there, your subconscious mind doesn't get the strength of this sentence. If you say, if you say, I am Lucy and God is breathing through me, you're still not using the full potential of this technique. You need to shift your identity to that of the God force. You say, I, the God Force, am breathing through Diana and acting out in her life with each exhalation. This one sentence is called the supreme practice of all of yoga. In other words, if you study the ancient Vedantas, this one practice is called the supreme practice. So to summarize today's talk, you cannot be surprised. Uh, separated from your creator. You came from that creator. That creator is full of abundance. Nature doesn't run out. 
uh, you know, the, the polar cap may be melting, but nature will think of some way it might get rid of some of the population so that the environmental heat goes down. Nature always adjusts itself and comes back to abundance. That same abundance is in your head, it's in your mind. Your mind and your brain cells are made of that same natural essence. But the key is the word consciousness. Uh, both physicists and the gurus say that all of this is made of consciousness. The tree, the crows, the grass, and us, we're all made of consciousness. Your mind is the instrument that sends signals out to cosmic consciousness. In other words, the beliefs you choose, the perspective you choose, and your daily actions. Your actions, beliefs, and perspectives send out signals to a world that's made of consciousness. And that consciousness has a boomerang effect. It simply mirrors your own questions back to you. So when we talk about samyama, simple being. It means your competition doesn't count. You don't need to envy anybody. You don't need to act like anybody else. Because nature never repeats itself. Your nose is the perfect nose. See your nose as the creation of nature. If there's no flawed seagull, there is no flaw in your nose. And then just go out and be completely yourself. This secret is so simple, most people are terrified of trying it. In other words, you were created exactly the way you are because the one force wants you to be exactly the way you are. No change, no envy, no competition. Nobody's going to steal bread from your table. So when things get tough, we panic. You know, I come back to the name Kambiz, and then there's panic. But if there's a bigger force breathing through me, there's no panic. The minute you feel like there's a bigger force breathing through you, all fear, isolation, loneliness, everything's gone. So three exercises I recommend. Number one, when we finish class today, go off into the campus here, Santa Barbara, and talk to a higher being as you're walking. Ask for advice. But as you're talking to that other being, imagine that being as the mind, as the mind of nature, the mind of God, the source of wisdom. Number one exercise, keep that dialogue going. Number two, your actions cannot demonstrate doubt. Why? Because all of this is made of consciousness. If this is made of consciousness and she boomerangs you back to yourself, then when you go to open your Pilates studio and you're shaking in the marrow of your bones, then this force is going to pick up your fear. It's going to boomerang the same thing back to you. So your daily actions in a crazy way, have to demonstrate absolute certainty. It's like Christ wouldn't say there's a 35% chance that this dead person is going to rise. He would simply say, rise. Like that. Your daily actions. Number three, your beliefs and perspectives. Because if you believe from a quantum physics standpoint and from a yogic standpoint, if you believe that this whole environment is conscious, breathing, and smart, then even the tree and the crow are going to pick up on your belief system. It's really no surprise. When your beliefs shift, you go to a bank, and suddenly the teller's reaction to you changes. Everybody in society is reacting to yourself. I was just walking up to this area with a friend of mine, and we were talking about direct experience. We were saying anybody who's had a direct experience of something in life, you know, their eyes catch on fire. If you've had a direct experience of courage, you can talk to anybody about courage and they'll instantly believe you because all they've got to do is look into your eyes and you're living your truth. 
So you're not, you're not doing a motivational talk. You've had a direct experience of courage. I had a friend who went from Belgium to India on $100. He said, Kambis, if I can make it to India and back to Belgium on $100, I will know that God is constantly holding hands with me. This guy came back and he was completely changed. When he made it back to Belgium, anybody who would look at him would instantly believe him on the topic of faith and courage. So God bless for now, and I will catch you for the second talk. Be well.